Yep. Let's go. Back. Back at it, y'all. Back with another freaking video, man. You know what it is. Hot like a Cheeto. Y'all, don't forget. Cheeto with some, with, eating with Cheetos. collard greens. Yuck. You're Your disgusting. It's going to be bubbles. Ooh, I did Ooh. that one time at, when I was younger. I can't imagine. I had some flaming Hots and I had some greens. Oh, my gosh. Double whammy. And upon exit, it don't supposed to feel like Ooh, that. Ooh, no. But <laughs> blew out. <laughs> I know it was. So glad y'all with us, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And let's keep it moving. What we got? Joe Rogan is shocked to learn about Thomas Sowell's wisdom. Okay. Sowell's. 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 I've been saying Sowell's. Sowell's. Wisdom. Let's hear about it. So, uh, do you know Thomas Sowell? I know that Sowell name. Sowell. I know that name. Thomas Sowell is a big, uh, famous conservative. He's at uh, Stanford. Um, he's at the Hoover Institute, I think. Anyway, so, you know, within this, I mean, first, just to set all of this up, we should set up briefly how does culture work, right? And the way culture works is, is that it, like genetic evolution, it works based on blind copying. So what ends up happening is, is that you are in awe of people, right? You look up to people, and so you blindly copy the things they do. And specifically, you start by blindly copying from the outside, and then you work in. Thomas Sowell is a black guy, right? Okay. And Thomas Sowell has, for years and years and years, been trying to fight racism. But he's been trying to fight racism by having a conversation about culture. Right. And the fact that there are essentially two different sort of, you know, to we're speaking broadly here. Right. But this is for the purposes of communication. Um, we're going to tell a simple story to start off with. Right. So broadly speaking, he puts two different cultures of people with dark skin next to each other. And one culture is these people from the West Indies. And one culture is this people group of people who grew up in the South with slavery and all that sort of stuff. Now. What one group, the West Indies group, does really well. So a, a lot of the successful black people, people like Colin Powell, are originally from that cultural heritage. The other group is the group that you find in ghettos and African-American communities and all of that sort of stuff. Okay. They don't do well, right? They don't get good education. They, you know, shoot each other. They're all these sorts of things. Those are facts. And the reason why Sol has been telling this story is because he's been trying to say, you know, when liberals look <clears throat> at the people in ghettos, they say, ah, racism. That's why they're not succeeding. Mm. Uh. And Sowell is saying, no, it's not. Because if you look at this group from the West Indies, they also came from the experience of slavery. There was slavery in the West Indies. Yeah. They are also black, so they also face racism. And yet they do well. So it has to be something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that other thing is the fact that these black people who are in the South, there's always been a big question, were black people robbed of their culture? Or did they preserve their authentic African culture? And what Sowell is saying is that they were robbed of their culture. And so they picked up the culture of the people around them. Mm. And the people around them were rednecks. And if you look at the white redneck culture and the black redneck culture. They have Wait, that makes one billion percent sense. Look how much sense that makes. That, that's unbelievable. Right now, I never knew that they, there was uh, a class or, you know, group called Black Rednecks. He just said it. Did yeah, you? yeah, I think it's just he, what he was saying. That's what it is, and that's what they okay. evolved from. Mm -hmm. Out of the same values. They don't particularly respect education. They love Jesus. They use violence in their conflicts. And um, they, you know... Uh, there's there's just you know a lot of the same values and a lot of the same outcomes and even ebonics which is you know black english is actually all from the west of england so it's actually this what it's from the west of england so for example if you go to places like cornwall um there used to be this amazing um uh these amazing ads on british tv right for this uh this devon custard or whatever and they would always say devon knows how they make it so creamy and they all talk like this right and so it doesn't sound like black english but they do say things like i be doing that and we be doing this and you be doing that and they be doing that oh, so they <laughs> use of that copy wow. of he, right where instead of saying i am you are he is she is they are they just say i be you be we be they be which is the classic feature of black english african-american Wow. English. Right. Now, <coughs> the wow, point is, is that... Mind blower. Mind blower. Yeah. Now, let's imagine that... How do you think that Thomas Sowell has been received by liberal America? Not well. 
not well. Not right? well. At all. Not well. And so, for example, Sowell has a book called Black Rednecks, White Liberals. Whoa, okay? gotta and read his it. His whole point yeah. is that, you know, if you actually, and you know, again, like Sowell is, you know, he researches the shit out of this stuff. He really does his work. Now, if you, if you look at the experience of African Americans after slavery, after slavery, they do really, they, they start to make real progress, right? And a large part of the reason why they make progress is because you start to get a lot of people from New England, either, you know, black people from New England or white people from New England, who come down and sort of reshape the culture. They create these schools and they're teaching those New England values, right? It's those Puritan values of hard work, tenacity, all of that sort of stuff. And so there's all this progress. And you have people like Booker T. Washington. And Booker T. Washington was an actual slave. And then after he got his freedom, he got to go work in a salt mine, which is literally the worst job ever. And in Booker T. Washington's Up From Slavery, he tells this great story about seeing a schoolhouse, right? And that, you know, he thought that going into a schoolhouse was about as close to heaven on earth as you could get. Whoa. Like, this is a dude who wanted an education really, really badly. And that's a lot of what you find in the, you know, early black experience in, you know, the post-slavery period. Yep. And in fact, you know, blacks, you know, before sort of World War II actually had higher rates of marriage than whites, all of these sorts of things that, you know, are now supposedly a problem. And then there's this turnaround, right? The black experience starts to go south, right? It starts to get worse. And what year is this around? This is post-World War II, right? So, um, so post-slavery... Black people experience uh, a rebounding. There's They're starting to make ambition, some progress. There's ambition. Progress. Yeah. And I mean, you know, if in terms of books to read, like, you know, just because a large, you know, a large part of what I'm trying to do in general is really let's move to the place of all people are created equal. Like, yeah. let's remove all these stupid distinctions, yeah. right, and really live that principle. Yeah. Right. And yeah. the problem yeah. is, is that in order to really live that principle, you need a new narrative that beats slavery. Yeah. So, you know, it's not if you go and talk to yeah. racists, you can't just say uh, racism is bad. Like, that doesn't destroy racism. Right. Right. What destroys racism is when you make sense of the things that they know. Right. They see, you know, people who are violent in the ghettos or they see crime or they see a lack of education or they see that Africa is poor. And you're able to tell a better story that makes sense of the things that they know, but also comes out with the conclusion, oh, we actually all have the same potential. Yo. I want to check that book out. We definitely have to. <clears throat> Woo! We definitely have to uh, get the book because I really, really want to. And, and everything else that I'm reading and listening to, I will put that right on in the mix because that's I really want to. I need to add him to my list. What's his name? Thomas Soul. So. I need to. Did I already add him <clears throat> on my history? I got to put that in my schedule. Some yeah. real history um, studying because. It's His, just a refresher. It, it really is. This ain't no refresher. This is well, all new information to me. Well, that part is, but just other other videos that we've been reacting to is, you know, a refresher of, of history, especially American history. But yeah, that's that. I just learned something new. Did not know that. Did not even think about it that way. He crushed that. that, that I was like, how did... Wow. Okay, I'm blown. I'm mind blown. I'm, I'm not even gonna lie to you, man. I just, you know, my the whole my whole understanding of life is starting to change um, in regards to to um, culture. Mm -hmm. And so, it, and and as we keep deep getting deeper, I'm sure it's going to get more and more understanding. But imagine if so many other people knew this or willing, not the fact that know to willing to receive this information. Because most people are going to chuck it up. It's like, oh, you know, you know, I'm I'm black, and this is what I'm doing. We were slaves, and this is what it was. Well, and ignorance is not problem. bliss. And you it, know, ignorance mm -hmm. is not bliss. Yeah. You know, people have to accept, you know, the truth for what it is, and that goes back to the Black Lives Matter movement and all that good old stuff. People yeah, you want still to, got folks still talking like people. Talking. You know, if they believe a lie, and it's the majority, of people are believing the lie. They want to believe the lie because everybody else is believing, believing the a lie. lie, and Confirmation they don't want to. They don't want to be. They don't want to be an outsider and and walk in the truth because you know why because it's going to be uncomfortable exactly they'll be ostracized they'll lose friends you yep. know you know but that's the majority 
Yes, ma'am. Like Christ said, the on the road to heaven is that thin, it's short narrow. Is, the, is the narrow, is the narrow long road that many people don't want to and don't want to take. And the wide path is the one most people are taking. So hey, that's fire. You know, that when you when you find out the truth, you definitely you know it behooves a person to really walk in it. But that's what God is all about. It's all about truth. He's all about truth. Not not living a life that you want it to look like or how you want it to uh, you know appear to be. He's giving you you know it is what it is. There is no in between. Ain't no in between. If this is what he said, and this is what it is. We try to make it fit to our lifestyle our and our whoop de whoop de whoop. Just like but, everything else that's going on. You know. This is no, okay. This I, I really am glad that we're getting this, you know. What? This schooling. This refresher, somewhat refresher, as well as new information. I'm not even gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. This information, um, we got about we've been on YouTube since twenty seventeen, but we didn't really start really doing YouTube in like twenty eighteen. And I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say this is the most valuable information that I have ever received in my YouTube career. Okay. Yeah. So, and I, nothing has topped that. And I don't think anything I will because it just changed the whole feeling of my spirit. So, man, hey, man, listen, man, like, comment, subscribe. Don't take a nose dive, but comment in the section below. We'll do more if you request it. Um. You yeah. got you got that's it? No, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm blow. Yeah. Um, you know, keep keep learning. Information changes things. For the most I mean, it should change things. You know, when you when you learn new information, look, apply it. Look at that one. The origin of black American culture and ebonics with Thomas Sowell. Wow. Yeah, it's almost two hours. I know. And that, that, that's a whole nother one. That's a whole nother yeah. I don't that's that might be a little too long for y'all because y'all attendance span ain't nothing but well, about have four to be minutes. Part one, two, three, you know, and all Part one, short, five, yeah. six, seven, eight, and yeah. Right. All right, man. I'll see y'all.